Hello, everybody. It's a big pleasure to be with all of you once again. Usually this moment is being introduced by Angel Sanchez, but at this particular moment, he's not available. He, he's working in many different fields of the festival. So this time it's me, which is the, I am the moderator, but I truly feel part of the festival in certain ways. <clears throat> and uh, I truly love the festival. So on behalf of the festival, welcome to this new round table. Round tables, which has been organized around certain topics, around uh, things that we think should be thought. And uh, this is Playdoc, it's a film festival which is connected with documentaries. And I think we are uh, facing certain kind of of movement, uh, symbolic movement and praxis on documentaries nowadays that maybe we have to think in terms of what does it mean non-fiction or documentaries, what kind of relationship we have with fiction. And for that, I have uh, proposed uh, a round table um, and let me introduce the, the, the guest. Before that, let me say something in Spanish. Están más que bienvenidos al festival. Eh, no puede estar en este momento Ángel, que es la persona que suele dar las cálidas bienvenidas y yo simplemente eh, ejercer mi función como moderador. Pero en esta ocasión Ángel <coughs> está trabajando en, otros, en, otras, uh, en otras áreas del festival y no pudo estar aquí haciendo lo que él hace también, que es introducir e imponer desde el mismo inicio un clima de amabilidad para pensar junto a otros. <coughs> Dicho esto, vuelvo al inglés porque esta, estas, estos momentos de, de reflexión mutua, la idea es dejar un poco el, el, el idioma español y pasar al inglés para que tenga una mayor accesibilidad a todo el mundo. So let's go to the to English once again. And let me first of all introduce the, the members of the, of the round table. Uh, let me introduce first Marta Mateus. She's from Portugal. She has studied philosophy, drawing, photography, music, and theater. His first film is uh, Farpa Farpaus Baldios, which was a film which had the, um, the, interna the world premiere in Cannes in the director fortnight uh, in 2017. And she has been working in, in many different fields. She has been, she's been working now in, in a new film. So I think that's enough. I don't want to go on with the long uh, presentations that are written, you could see in the festival website if you want to know more about each one of us. Uh, <clears throat> you are very, very welcome, uh, Marta. It's a big privilege to, to have you here. Once in my life, I had the great idea to invite you to a class in Chile uh, where I teach, and it was one of the most mm, beautiful moments as a, as a teacher. So I know that you, you will bring that quality here. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Pleasure. On the, another guy who is part of this round table, it's nowadays quite well known because he has won recently, one year and a half ago, the Golden Beer in Berlin with a quite uh, uh, controversial film, very funny and very politically intelligent, which is Bad Luck in Banging, Banging or Lorny Lorn Porn, very strange name, by the way. But uh, he has been working with very powerful films like I Do Not Care If We Go Down in History as Barbarian or as Carrot Hearts, and, uh, and he has been around for a couple of years with many, many films with a capacity of doing films one year after another, which sometimes is almost unbelievable. 
I'm referring here to Radu Jude, who is from Romania, and it's a big pleasure to have you here because I know also Radu very very well, and uh, is one of the of the one of the few filmmakers that he's always let me put it in these words. He's a kind of uh, a freelance thinker in certain ways. He's always thinking about cinema, not only about what he does, but also what, about what is cinema. So that is the main reason that I brought it here to the round table. And thank you so much, uh, Radu, to, to be here, to be, you are in Bucharest and uh, uh, Marta is in Lisbon and uh, me and the next guest are in Buenos Aires. To connect all together at the same time is really, really difficult. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> After this uh, exaggerated presentation, I feel like running away, but uh, okay. I let you go to Gaston to, to, to hear what you say. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, Gaston Solniki is the, our last and uh, the third uh, member of the round table. Uh, Gaston is an Argentinian filmmaker. Uh, firstly, he studied uh, cinema in the NUA, NUI sorry, the, the Tisch School of Arts in New York. But he, ha he has been doing one of the most uh, interesting films in the last couple of years. The first film was a portrait on one of the most important and incredible musicians we had in Argentina, which was Mauricio Cajel. Then he began doing um, more, um, in, in, in quotes, personal films, because I think the first one is absolutely personal, which was... The first one was Papyrosen, the third one was Getsekalu. Then he made again a kind of portrait from another guy that Radu, Marta and I highly loved him and admire him because he was the greatest of the greatest, Hans Hursch. And that film is uh, Introduzione all'oscuro. And recently, he has um, presented his last film in Berlinale, in the Encounters Berlinale competition, which is a little love package because it, it is a beautiful film. All his film has been at, uh, at, uh, at, uh, bought, bought by the Roma recently, which is truly something for an independent, truly independent Argentinian scene, uh, filmmaker. Thank you very much, Gaston, for joining us, uh, in this case from Buenos Aires. And let's begin, if you if you allow me. Thank you very much, Roger, for the warm welcome. I like this uh, language you use to introduce us. I feel like we are three gladiators about to start biting each other's ears. So it's a very good beginning. OK, thank you so much. <clears throat> So let me put the let me first read what many people maybe from the from the round table uh, audience might have read but it's not bad to repeat it again and um, uh, how the the round table has been called and what is behind the, the title and then I will tell you something, and I like to use that uh, small story to begin. The title of our roundtable is Hybridity, the Category of an Era, Truth, Fiction, and Reality. Uh, the description of this is the following. In the last two decades, a term, which is the hybridity, has become naturalized with which the difference between documentary and fiction is thought to be settled. The hybrid seems to be constituted as a synthesis of two antithetical positions that since the beginning of cinema have operated as a demarcation line between the real and the imaginary, between the will to truth and the will to fiction. There are those who believe that neither term does justice to what is happening with cinema. But there is no doubt that the term, rather than encouraging us to think about what it is happening with regard to cinematography representation, rather stop us from going deeper and thinking about cinema relationship with truth, whether it is fiction or documentary. So that is the conceptual background, which is open in certain ways, 
but at the same time, I would say, it, for me at least, it's precise. So let me, the story that I want to share, and then let's begin, and then I will not be speaking so much. On the contrary, I will try to connect what you say. Is the following. Last year, in a, it doesn't matter which is the film, and it doesn't matter which is the festival, but it happened. What, is, what I am about to tell you is, is something that happened. It is a festival, maybe a European festival, maybe not, in which there was, uh, they are still keeping the idea of categories, like in competition, there is a competition on fiction competition, and there is a competition which is non-fiction competition. So therefore, they keep a certain kind of a structural line, which is what fiction films are and what non-fiction films are. On the non-fiction competition, it won a film, which I would say is not a documentary, if not is a fiction. It began as a kind of documentary, but it's quite clear that after 20 minutes, there is a shift and the shift show itself that is not a non-fiction and if not is truly a fiction but that was the winner of the non-fiction documentary non-fiction competition therefore documentary competition so i know that moments and other filmmakers who who had films in the in that competition the documentary non-competition and uh, and they were truly surprised about firstly that the film was in that area in that field of the festival and secondly that that film has won so if you see that whatever you think it is right or not to the merging from fiction non-fiction to do the distinction not understandable or or whatever, or you maybe you could think there should be a clear line between one and the other. It's quite clear that there is certain kind of confusion. So from that starting point, I would like to know how do you think about that? How do you think about this relationship between fiction and non-fiction? And what happens when this is something which is behind poetics, which is behind uh, how a film is being done and presented? Whoever wants to begin is welcome. Or maybe I should ask Marta. The, the, the sound. Welcome. So, uh... Actually, I don't think much of about these things, <laughs> what it is, what is not. But because of this conversation, of course, I, you know, was thinking, but what is exactly this problem? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, trying to conceptualize or uh, to put in boxes um, things. And um actually if you I was now that you were think you were talking I was thinking that a few days ago I I was reading um about the author's law which is divided in two different things the moral property of of the the work and the property of which is the thing itself the piece of art and then there was a list of things uh, that could not have an author um, or it was not protected, which was, in a way, documents, which is of the common uh, um, documents that belongs, in a way, by the law uh, for the common people, which is uh, speeches, public speeches, uh, that you you can use because they're not protected, or um, documents for uh, 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 from, uh, from uh, testimonies in court or in uh, TV. 
now I was just thinking about this because um, uh, when you have two documents and when you put two documents together, you are already creating a fiction. So because you put this document and not the other, so you are creating a narrative. So uh, a narrative is in these terms, we could say it's a montage of documents. Um, and I think in the work of cinema, which is not so different from the work of literature or poetry or even music or painting, um, we are just reproducing what we learn since we were children, which is to hear stories or to hear um, the, you know, we, we all still have narrators, uh, our parents, grandparents, teachers, friends. Um, and I think this is, uh, the way we mostly understand what is to be alive, it's through fiction, through these narratives that we change and uh, exchange and, uh, and share with each other. And, and, and in my work, which, um, for example, um, you know, that, of course, th there is the, always this question, but it's a documentary, it's a fiction, it's, it's everything. It's, I don't know, documentary. Yes, in this sense that I thought now, yeah. because I was reading the law, <laughs> um, I thought it was interesting, this thing, actually. There is no authorship. You can, it's not protected, this kind of, of document, because it's, it's for the common and in a way, uh, they don't produce fiction by itself, but maybe if you call in the way you collect them, even uh, people that work uh, mostly with documents, um, filmmakers like uh, uh, I don't know, um, Alexander Klug, uh, um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it's the one I remember now. Um, you're already creating uh, something that there is an authorship behind it. So what I think um, when I'm trying to think about the, the work I try to do with the people I work with, it's actually uh, this fiction or because in a way it's, it's we are um, thinking about notions of reality and uh, this notions of reality it's very very subjective um, and and in a way since the beginning of uh, uh, since the Greeks let's say it's the same until today we're just trying to organize life and organize concepts we try to think uh, through fiction uh, our life and this can be done uh, through history which is a kind of fiction of course micro history uh, macro history but it's always a way of because it's always something missing you know like uh, now you if I look at you can see what is in the back of me, but you cannot see what's in front of me, and I cannot see. So we're always missing something. <laughs> Even the totalitarian um, panoptic is mm -hmm. missing something. So, um, yes, I don't know. Maybe, you know. Maybe. No, no, no. It, it, it is a fantastic uh, starting point. And, uh... There are a lot of things to be said about that, and I, I don't know how would be the other other members of the roundtable reactions. But um, I, I like to listen to e any one of you. It could be Gaston and Radu. Before I pass the word to 
my new friend Radu, I don't like to disagree with you, Marta, but uh, we are in front of you. Um, you, yes. Yes, at least me and I think uh, our friends here too. Um, yes, given the introduction you made, Roger, um, I still hear here resonating the word competition, which I don't think it's part of the uh, selected theme or title of, of this uh, so-called circular table um, or panel. Um, to me, it's a... Uh, I always I I don't know if it's because now we are in the curse of the curse and the curse of what used to be called Bafisi, a true celebration of independent cinema, uh, when at the time it really meant uh, the only occasion to see certain films in a certain way, um, often accompanied by its people. Uh, I don't know if this uh, backdrop of uh, emotional. Uh, event in which I'm presenting my new film in Buenos Aires. It's uh, bringing so much of my school um, tra 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 tragedies back. But when I hear your question, I, I think of it as a multiple choice, like, you know, fiction, documentary or reality. Like one, as you, one must uh, make a choice or so. And I, I have been from the beginning um, dazzled by this uh, big confusion. I mean, like the wrong unities. It's just the wrong way to, I mean, I'm sure many, many people uh, think of their work that way. I'm doing this or I'm doing that. But to me, it's ever so different from, from cinema, from cinema's capacity to deal with certain materials. Um, yes, I, I have always been very um, sort of uh, frustrated that, that way. Just like I feel when I, 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 I read descriptions of films, as if the film was, you know, description of, of certain events. Um, uh, it's a part of my personal uh, issue with the screenwriting script as a way to portray, you know, a project of a film or, or pitching. Uh, of course, this is all very personal, my way in a very spontaneous way in relating to, to certain materials that eventually become my films in a very chaotic, uh, very chaotic, uh, you know, way. Uh, but even in the end, if you were to uh, something Fiction. very interesting. Yeah, no, very well staged, my friend. Bravo! You're becoming. If this is a trending. <laughs> this is how you get to be a you know a big YouTube star. Uh, anyways, um, even when people talk about uh, these things, like you were uh, telling the story, uh, that's what seems to settle the the greatest uh, you know uh, confusion. It's like um, I don't know. I mean. Uh, it's not naturally confusing. Uh, I'm sure, uh, as Marta was saying, this natural ability we have as, as kids to experience uh, fiction or reality, uh, it's somehow very um, damaged by, by all of these uh, questionings. Um, you know, what things does the, the kid do naturally? An ability to be captivated by, by a story. Um, and how culture in some ways is, um, certain culture is, is affecting us in that way and uh, for me of course you know i mean there's so many wonderful quotes uh, about this but in which ways you know um as godard put it melies was doing uh, documentaries about circus artists and lumiere was doing fictions about the, the factories uh, it's it's literally like this i mean it's it's even the film you know even the big studio films are also uh, an archive a document as marta was saying uh, yeah, so to me, it's, it's always a very um, confusing discussion how to put these things in boxes where cinema has a much more broad and interesting um, capacity to, to deal with these layers, just like music. How do you see Radu? Well, I think, first of all, that it's unfair for me and Gaston because you and Marta have philosophical uh, studies which I don't, and maybe Gaston doesn't. And because it's a, it's a philosophical uh, debate, and uh, a huge one, actually, that, uh, I don't know, I'm also very confused, uh, but not only by this. Um, because, you know, I think, uh, I think there's two, two or three things that I can, uh, can 
start to to just try to to categorize here the the first thing is the fact that we are uh, we should decide uh, the plane of discussion if it's on a kind of an absolute philosophical uh, level or if it's on a utilitarian uh, and practical level because from uh, from the utilitarian level i don't agree with what marta said that you know history is a, is a, is a fiction and uh, putting together two documents is a fiction because in an absolute way one can argue like that but from a utilitarian perspective i know how uh, how uh, how uh, shady and how 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 easy it is to use this uh, philosophical problem in order to 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 you know to uh, it's like in Romania uh, uh, the the negationist of the Holocaust and I made some films about the involvement of Romania in the Holocaust. People say, well, you know, history is just a fiction, and we we cannot know, we we cannot have the absolute uh, true truth uh, about what happened. How do you know? How can you prove uh, uh, from an uh, from a absolute truth point of view that these things happen in the way that you I don't know speak about in the film, although. I don't do this kind of uh, of uh, of reconstruction, etc. So I think that uh, that that's a, 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 a decision of what's the level of of our discussion. That's one thing. The second is the fact that in one way or another, I think uh, a, a film, if it's a fiction, if it's a documentary or a hybrid, uh, and the hybrid, you know, makes me think. Uh, uh, but because I read the book a few years ago about that guy Ivanov, who, who used this word for making the mix between uh, man and monkey, so this is what a hybrid is. But I think we have a notion that uh, we cannot, uh, or I don't know, we have to question maybe, but I, I don't have the philosophical training to do it properly, which is the the, the notion of truth, because. You know, uh, I, I think it's very difficult. You know, if you read the dialogue between Rorty and Pascal Angel, and at some point Rorty says, you know, we have to get rid of the notion of truth. Truth doesn't exist. And we have to use the notion of what is justified from a social point of view. So from this point, I, I really think I, I, I have a trouble to live in a world where uh, there wouldn't be the notion of truth, even if I understand how difficult it is to, 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 to explore it or to, to express it, or that the fact that there is no absolute truth, you know, and I, I see this, uh, and this problem, this, this philosophical problem, I, I'm a bit annoyed by it because I see it nowadays, you know, the war started very close to us in Ukraine and there's a lot of images or testimonies coming and the, the people close to Putin or to Russia always use this problem of truth and of the relationship between images and truth saying, well, you know, these are fake images, they are staged, the testimonies are fake, etc., etc. Even if there are more and more evidence of the massacres of the Russians, etc people you know it's it's very easy to to use this kind of postmodern attitude towards truth uh, in order to to go against uh, the, the the reality and the, uh, to, to go against what is the common sense truth not in a very deep philosophical sense uh, and then the question I, that i have to to put it to all of you is if the, if the truth is something important what is the relation between an object which is images and uh, and truth because truth as you as we know from from and i think it's gombrich who who made it uh, who said it um, uh, very clear that truth belongs to sentences truth belongs to to verbal language truth doesn't belong to images images are images are objects or uh, traces of uh, of uh, something um but they are they they, they do not have a truth uh, value. You cannot say an image is truthful and another one is not truthful, as you can say about language, although even in the language, you know, it's uh, it's like in mathematics. You cannot prove that zero is a number. It's impossible to prove that. So you just uh, make it like that. You, you, you accept it like that in order to, cons to build the mathematics. But is there the connection between images in, uh, uh, and truth? That's the main question, and I'm, I don't uh, know how to answer, but maybe you can. Your reflection was the most uh, philosophic. 
<laughs> no, but I, I, I'm, I'm really preoccupied by this and I don't have answer to it. And actually, Roger, who has an obsession with this team, asked me a few, one more or two months ago to write a text. Uh, and my text was, you know, Roger, I don't know because you have to define those things and it's impossible to define them. You know, what is an image? Even what is an image is very difficult to define it. Because I see an image in front of me and uh, I assume I speak with an object now, <laughs> you, you know, and I assume that in this image that I have, which is pixels, is the real Roger Cosa, which I met at some point and not an image of his, although it could be an image, uh, a fake image, it could be, uh, or I have to assume that the lady in front is a filmmaker from Portugal whose name is Marta Mateus, but it can, I cannot have uh, an absolute... Uh, uh, truth value towards that it's impossible so i have to, to accept it you know no, I you, don't have know. To, you, you have to accept it in certain ways and you also trust which is part of yeah. the of, which is part of the problem in certain ways because there is a, a spirit of trust towards what we see towards what we say and maybe today that kind of um, social pre-understanding not only in cinema, beyond cinema, we are not living in a in a in a, in a spirit of trust. On the contrary, I would say we are we are living in a spirit of distrust. So this is one of the damages process of our own societies nowadays. And that is a, a very important question for me. It's not all that I have an obsession personally. I think there is something there is a core in the in the in this conversation what is going around and you uh, Radu and I like very much how um, Marta began because there's something there to, to, to think over it and to, to go deeper towards that because it seems to be that what Marta said and what Radu said could be in, a, in an opposition I, I put them I think there are the different layers that you are Radu are asking for but let me put it in this way now and how to react to that when you see night and fog by Bresme. How do you see that? Because no, I just can I just before yes, that? Yes, yes. now it's like an electro a presidential debate. You have three minutes each. No, 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 no. No, we are free to talk, Marta. Please, just, no, just, yeah. just to just to just to say that I perfectly agree with with Hadou. And when I say that. I'm not questioning history. I'm saying that there is many problems when we think about history. And for example, I, I think I didn't develop this before when I was speaking. For example, the way I tried to understand uh, the effects of, of um, political uh, historical events in my country, and especially in, in the region I was born, was with the people that lived this time. So the thing is that you're going away because because a little bit of a notion of history as something just written in a book, and then you have forty thousand books about the same um, historical event, for example, and each one has different perspectives. So we not we're not saying that. Um, different perspectives is a problem. We're saying that these different perspectives are contributing to a wider notion of, and then what we have to do is to uh, cross this information. And then uh, to say that, uh, of course, it's, it's, it's a political problem. It can be. Uh, and now I saw something written here and I lost a little bit myself, uh, but, um, but what, but to say that, um, of course it's a, oh, okay. I, of course it's, it's, a, um, of, of course we don't know what is reality. It's the first question of all since, uh, <laughs> I don't know, since ever, you know? The thing is that, for example, now that we, you were talking, and, and especially with these new things, uh, with the news and how how 
o, the news um, are so present um, and create uh, different speeches uh, about the same reality. And the, the thing uh, of, of saying that, of accusing that uh, someone is creating a fiction about a reality, the problem is that there is, it's the way we, we hear and we, we use the word fiction because um, there is a kind of fiction, it's a bad thing. And I think that, that there is some connection between this idea of fiction and the idea of art. And that's why we don't respect art in a way, I think, um, not us, but, you know, it's not uh, the number one um, um, effort of all governments to uh, create art and to think through art. It's because we think art is not, it's a fiction, you know, so we don't learn anything from it. In what fiction is helping us, in my point of view, is to, um, as I said, organize a reality and to think about this reality, but not has an, an ultimate and the unique perspective of this reality. And then we, as uh, spectators, we can read many presentations of this reality and we build our own perspective of these different perspectives. And that's the only thing, the problem of the, the propaganda and uh, the, um, especially the Russian propaganda, is that there is just one perspective of the speech. There is just one reality and there is no possibility of crossing realities. Hmm. Before the yes. night and the fog, sorry. No, 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 it was fantastic. And I think it's, there is, uh, layer after layers and even though that we cannot define or find uh, there will not be a solution of course but as much as we can think together things could be seen in a different manner and i think that is what it's all about maybe we have to bring this more towards cinema we are still in cinema but how, how let me put the question in other words about what you Marta was saying. We could say that um, that fiction in certain ways is working on truth. It's not truth, but it's working with something that comes from truth. What is truth would be the question of Radu. Well, it's very difficult to say, it, but at least we could say it's not what we want. It's something that is beyond what we want. So, a, a, a filmmaker is working through fiction in order to organize certain aspect of, of reality and to, pro, and to provoke and to propose certain perspective on that. Let's put it in that way. So if we think like that, so why or how do we think when we have, even though, forget about boxes, forget about layers in say in, in, in labels in say this is documentary this is fiction no it is the attitude towards the 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 object that you are working as a film there is a still sense to be thinking on that you gaston you have done two films which are outstanding to think about these things because papi rosen I made it. I met a, 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 a once in a teaching class. People who didn't know anything about your work. I presented Papi Rosen as a fiction film, and then Ketsekalu as a documentary film, and, and they couldn't realize. They say yes, of course it is. But when you did Papi Rosen, which is a documentary about your family. And when you did Ketsukalu, that you used things about your family, but as a fiction, in certain, and a spirit of fiction, you keep a certain kind of line. But at the same time, it's very difficult to know which is the difference. So how do you see that, that you have done 
see magnificent films in order to think about this problem. Well, it's very interesting that you point these uh, two films because it's probably the only time in my life in which I ask myself this question, where I brought it to me like as a tool to work. What is fiction? I mean, if I'm not going to spend five years fermenting with a script and trying to talk to people about it and, you know, and then what is a fiction after spying my family or, you know, thinking that something had a, a value because I had access to, to somebody's uh, life. Um, so this uh, affected very much in what I, I called a transition to fiction, but even though it was really just a, some, I mean, after making Papyrus and I was very confused uh, and it was, it was the biggest uh, moment that I was uh, non, non filming and, and lost in, in my, in my life, because of course, after, after, uh, you know, making a film about which you're some kind of war photographer of your own family. For over a decade, it's very difficult to drain yourself of, of, of this approach of, of filming and thinking of how to structure an narrative and so on. Uh, so it was very confusing. And, and it's not that I am so obsessed with my family or, or family as a, as a subject, even though it, it still um, appears and, and comes back in my work, like in my new film. Um, the way I think of it, in the relation between this, uh, of course, the material is very similar. A certain uh, section of, of Argentine, sorry, my cat is also fictionizing. fictionizing. Um, he's called Lubitsch, by the way. Uh, because even when I was doing my my first uh, real sort of documentaries, uh, the films I was looking and that I was trying to make had to do with a certain very far away tradition of, of fiction, but nothing to do with what I was doing on the surface level. Um, yes, I, I think if in terms of, of distance, um, of a distance, no, um, there has to do with the, the way I approach this uh, same material because Papyrus and Kexakalu, for sure, there are uh, different uh, ways to look at, at a very similar, uh, yes, let's call it section of, of society here in, in Argentina. And in the one hand, I have, it seems almost like holding my my heart in my hand while I'm doing it in a very, you know, close and intimate uh, relation, uh, even physically. So with the uh, portrait uh, family, whereas in the other is as though, of course, in Papyrus, and I think the complexity is that I'm also looking them through a, an aquarium, like this is schizophrenia of being both in the core and outside of it. So in Quetzalcanu, um, of course, there are different things going on, but I, I, I feel like I'm trying to to put a distance and to look in, in a different context with the architecture and with the landscape, and also in relation to a completely different material, which was Bartok's uh, opera. Um, but yes, um, I don't know if this... You're, you're silent. You're all underwater, my friends. I don't even listen to your laughs. When you when you um, when you decide to make the, the if you have to define what you say something which is important which is the is some kind of procedure in terms of how you work with the materials that you have said there was certain kind of distance can you go deeper towards that because it's quite clear that one film is a fiction one another is not uh, in certain ways you know. But can you add something else? Because the 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 um, I think what you do in both films, you don't work in hybrid hybridism. It's different what you do. You you make a decision how to organize the materials, and uh, maybe you can think about and maybe later on tell tell us something. But uh, no, what I can tell you is that um, I mean. There's no discussion the way I, I mean, that line that we're looking for trying to define doesn't really exist. That, that's the problem. Um, the way all of my films are, are produced, it's completely documentary. I don't use lights. Uh, it's five people usually, including myself. Uh, there's no scripts. There's no, there's nothing. It's really like, like, you know, uh, street photography. Uh, it's very, very, um, uh, intimate and, and very, very small. It has nothing to do with the 
I mean, if it would compare to any sort of a production system, it would be the cheapest, uh, the most <laughs> lower depth of, of a fiction production, you know. Um, but of course, the way we approach what we're filming, and especially the ways we gather and we uh, put it together, ask itself uh, some of these questions. And um, yes, I mean, I, I will continue to think about, about your questions, give you a more depth, in-depth answer, but but um, it, it's very subjective. I mean, I, I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking myself, perhaps it's also uh, some kind of mandate from Mauricio Kagel, who you mentioned in your introduction, the com composer of White Portrait in my first film, uh, who was also a, a filmmaker, an experimental filmmaker, and who uh, informed a lot in many ways, not only my first film, but I think also yeah, all of my films, things he thought about music and cinema as a way of communication. Uh, I am not someone who, who is not caring about what's going on. Uh, I myself, uh, I'm very aware of what happens or doesn't happen with the materials and I, I like to screen it a lot while I edit and we try to understand you know this what we call this logic emotional logic to try to understand while we gather this these materials and and yes we are thinking in terms of fiction in Kexakalu is what we thought of a transition to fiction but not as a place where you end you know like so this is a fiction um yes it's it's a whole very confusing uh, subject Uh, but you know, Gaston, I think, uh, for instance, in, when, when you, you say you didn't think of that, but I don't think it's uh, true, because uh, when you see Papi Rosan, which I, I uh, like a lot, actually, I would be very disappointed if I would find out that this story is not truthful, is not true, is not a documentary in the, you know, the, the meaning, in the banal meaning of the world. If then I would found out that uh, Gaston took some uh, people and they act out some characters and pretended to do a documentary, I would be extremely disappointed. Because the power of the film is that it, 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 it is, of course, it, it, it's cinema, it's fictionalized in, in a way, the shot, the, the frame is choosing something, etc., etc., but uh, the... the there is a, a kind of a feeling of truth that comes from the fact that the, the story is real, you know. No, no, for, for sure. But um, does this power come from really? how, you, how you experience it or about, you know, I mean, at the end, um, I don't want to sound too uh, intellectual or philosophic, but, you but know, you have to. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and what does it matter? I mean, in the end, I mean, you know, uh, it's like Roger was saying, how the film is presented. Um, I mean, I, I deal with my own, I mean, for me, like the documentary fiction also, also was a big uh, karma at the beginning in terms of the difficulty in, in showing out the films, you know, like certain films. I mean, nowadays it also has opened and changed, but at the time it was more difficult for my films to have a life to be shown when they were considered uh, documentaries. So perhaps I still have some flavors from, from that period. Uh, but I think if you, you know, if you were, I mean, there's the element of, of subject, subjectivity in the end, because also I, I hear now people, uh, you know, even in my new film, some people think, you know, it's, um, you know, not generous and, you know, uh, like only talking to people who feel represented by the, you know, the social conflicts of a high class uh, portrayed in the film where other people feel completely, you know, touched and gratified and they feel there's a generosity. So, you know, there is also this difference between the inherent, you know, reality of a film and, and how people, uh, you know, use it to speak of themselves. Uh, but what you say about Papirosen is interesting. I mean, w if I would have uh, chosen actors to, to, to act my family, I mean, it would be different. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, but if it would have been in such a way that you trick me, I would feel very tricked. You know, yes. into that. But at the same time, at the same time there, are, there are a lot of tricks, you know. I mean, when Marta was talking before also about art, you know, I'm thinking also from Byzantine art, which I'm very, uh, uh, I feel very close. Uh, there's the element of artifice, you know, it's, it's so much in the center of, of cinema for sure, and art, and it's always been, and I think in the end, again, it's we're talking about this. Uh, unities that mean nothing, it's really the way they are treated, you know, we're talking about 
fiction and, and documentary, but we're not talking about generosity or, you know, intelligence or humor uh, or the opposite. Um, and the same films are experienced and discussed with the opposite reactions. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very confusing... Uh, sure, sure. But I, I have the feeling that when it comes to cinema as an art, because it's also uh, different uh, directions here, because if we see cinema as art, and only as an art, then I think the, the problem is not that big. Because you can say, well, it's a story made up, uh, whatever fiction, uh, fiction has a truth in a, in a, in a very uh, oblique way, like Vargas Llosa wrote a book which is called The Truth of Lies, and with, which is his criticism about some fiction that he likes, you know, truth of lies. There is lies because it's fiction, but there is a truth in But if we see cinema also as something to, to represent reality, then I think uh, there is uh, something, and I, I uh, it just popped on my computer, and I want I will share the screen for you because I think that's uh, I try to share the screen if it uh, if it works. Um, share screen. This, does it work? Do you see my screen now? We see some pornography. No, it's not pornography, but uh, entire screen. Yeah, entire screen. Just a second. You see it now, my screen? No, I think it won't work because it's an application. You know, it's not like. Ah, okay. So it doesn't work. <laughs> no. It, it works or not? I think you have to. Exit. We show we show the whole screen. If you exit... now now you see something like uh, something else. No. No. Wow. Now yes. 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 Okay. We see. Okay, so there is this video which appeared on a Russian site saying that U.S. Army recording in Romania today heading for the Ukrainian border, right? And there is a video of that. And you have the date here, etc. Okay, so I stop it here. And now you, you have this image, which is, uh, you know, a documentary image, so to speak. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a total fake, actually. Actually. So what, how, how, how do we see this moment of cinema? You have this image, you have the image, you have the tanks, you have the text, you have the, the proof. And in the same time, it's not what the text says it is. So I think there's always uh, uh, what, what we said before, and I think it's Errol Morris who, who, who tried to, to think into that maybe better than us, uh, uh, saying that all images, in order to exist, in order to, to, to mean something, are always, and this is a little bit against what Godard is always trying to say that, you know, we don't need text, we only need images, 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 and images are important and not the text, and I understand him very well, uh, up to a point when actually the image itself doesn't mean anything. So you, you, you have to have a text that says what that image is, or means, or represents, and even if that text is written, or it's created in your mind, or, uh, you know, so... So it's always this relation between uh, between image and text that makes uh, the things even more complicated, I think. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yes. Uh, the, 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 I, I think it, it is, um, if I recapitulate what we have been saying, of course, it's difficult to be talking on this and to be extremely precise. We are just going around uh, a certain enigma. And one of the enigma is, what is an image? And nowadays there is a, a problem towards the, that, that question because nowadays we, you, maybe we have to add something more, which is, what is a cinematography image? And what is other images? Because not any image belongs to cinema anymore. In the past years, 
now know. Image in movement in the past belongs to certain kind of tradition, which was cinema, but nowadays there are plenty of images around everywhere, every day. So even it's difficult to understand not only what is an image, but what is an image in cinema. So this is a plus that I wanted to add. But one of the questions behind it is in a very naive, in a very, let's say, uh, innocent way, in the past, to have an image, and I think that is connected with certain ideas from Bazin, it, be, it used to think, it used to, to be something that he had certain sense of reality. There was a certain kind of connection. But nowadays, in the year of in the era of digital images, I don't think we have that kind of connection immediately towards reality. In fact, on the opposite, to have an image, it doesn't mean anything in terms of, of true value. It could be exactly the opposite. So what I'm trying to think, how filmmakers, it doesn't matter in this case if they are doing fiction or non-fiction or if they're merging or not, it, it, it doesn't count it, but how to think about that. I don't know if you, if you, if you understand me. It's not just a game, this. it's quite important. And I don't think big filmmakers, Jean Renoir, Dreyer, whoever you want to bring up to the converse, Bresson, they were not just, it was not just a joke. It was maybe they, they even Chaplin, of course, Chaplin as, as one of the main, of the main uh, exponents. When Chaplin was doing The Great Dictator, he was doing fiction, but he was working on truth. You know, he was working on truth, directly on truth. So this is what it's the the, the heart of my of the proposition that I have made. I don't know how do you see that. Okay, I, I go. <laughs> you see, Chaplin, it's a great um I think maybe the greatest example. Um also thinking about uh just the way even with no sound just playing how you can show uh, a reality through um, gestures affection what what i was saying before this is that for example you can see one image of um, the war now for example, and then you see 10 images of the war, and then you see 1,500 images of the war connected to each other, and that's what we do as filmmakers. We connect, we edit, we put images in relation, and of course images and sound, if there is sound, and text, if there is text. And if these images move, if there is a moving image, not just um, a painting or a, a picture, a photograph, then you are creating a narrative. And the, the thing is that I think it's it's a, a question of um, I don't have any problem with the world with the word narrative because my life is a narrative. And it's full of fiction. And fiction, it's not a problem. It's just a way for me to understand reality. That's my, I, I, that's my starting point. When I put things together, you know, I try to, yeah, one day you think, putting these three things together, you think one thing, and the other day you think other thing. You know, each filmmaker have this tremendous experience of editing which is one day you think this is this three images together are perfect the time and everything and the other day you don't like it because you don't feel it so this is not just a rational thing it's an emotive thing it's um and when i when i when we think about history also uh, the thing is that we are mostly also because uh, uh, 
that's how we our generation or maybe the 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 youngest generation uh, changed uh, the way they learned uh, they are learning history but it's more in, uh, just connected with books and with written history in nowadays i think we it's much more rich because we have much more mediums to understand that so we have m much more things to put in relation and to cross this information i don't know if i continue what you were saying <laughs> The sound. Radu, how do you see this? I, am, I, I don't know. You you, you asked uh, something important at the beginning uh, of this question, saying uh, there is a difference uh, of what an image was uh, in Bazan time in uh, in his description of the ontology of the image, etc. Like. Uh, like a, a, an, an imprint of like a mummy of reality, like a shadow or imprinted on, on a material that was an analog image, so to speak, uh, contrary to a digital image nowadays, which is pixels, which is not, which doesn't have the trace of the connection between reality. And, and here, I, to be honest, when I make a film, I, I do it like in the Bazan time. I don't take into consideration that the image is digital. And I think it's impossible to do it in this way because otherwise, when you look at the football game, at the football on TV, you know, you don't say, well, I'm, I'm seeing an image which is not connected with reality. Where mm -hmm. when you go to, to the airport and show to the policeman your uh, ID photo, you cannot say to the policeman, but you know, there's there's a digital image. It's no connection <laughs> between this image and, and me. How can you know there is a connection? Because it's not. That's one thing. So I I, I really I'm, I'm I'm very old fashioned in a way. I'm 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 stuck in the uh, from an ontological point of view of the films. I'm somehow in Bazan time. I'm in, in the beginning of the fifties. That's one thing. And on the other thing, think, uh, on the other hand, I always uh, discuss this with my DOP, with Marius Panduru, who's uh, not only, a, I think, a very good uh, photographer, but he's uh, very, he has uh, an enormous knowledge of physics. He's also a pilot and he's, he knows a lot of physics and chemistry and mathematics and so on. And he always say, you know, Bazan was completely wrong because there is a trace of reality in an image from that point of view but that that reality that is imprinted is only a fraction of reality because you don't have infrared you don't have ultraviolet from the spectrum of the of the physical uh, light you know of the physical of the spectrum of 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 light so anyway even that Bazan was completely wrong because that image is a kind of digital image even in his time. But, uh, but it's, it's a little bit more difficult to see it in this way. And because it's a little bit harder to fake it, uh, it seems that there is a connection. But if you think more, uh, like Marius, like my, my, my DOP is doing it, he says it's the same thing, a digital image or an analog one. Well, it's some differences between them, of course, but uh, there is no connection between images and reality. And uh, with all due respect, and I think what he means, but in the same time, as I said, I'm, I'm quite old fashioned. And when I do, when I use, for instance, in, in some of my films, some of my documentaries, some, some uh, uh, photographs from the 1940s, uh, I use them as documents showing that, uh, like, like a proof, like when you're in a court, in a way. Uh, even if they are, you know, from paper transformed into a digital image and then put on the screen. It's impossible for me to, to think that uh, these films uh, could exist in, in, a, in a world where there is no connection between images and reality. That's all I can say. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm in a wrong model, but I belong to this old fashioned uh, philosophical uh, model in a way. Roger, other thing is the frightening uh, new idea of uh, Zuckerberg, of meta something. 
you know mm -hmm. this holograms we will live like <laughs> you know this, this is i'm i'm also very old fashioned i i don't know how to think about it <laughs> I, I really don't know how how we are going there but we are going there yeah because we i think radu marta and i think also gaston we we are still we are still witness of the 20th century in certain ways and uh, and we are still thinking on what i would say is the tradition of cinema and uh, the tradition of cinema is connected with this kind of of imperatives i think but of course we we but are you know even, even even for fiction sorry to interrupt i i yes, still no, have course. problems i still have really big problems to see uh, even if it's a brilliant a genius etc and I'm not, not nothing to question here a film like uh, the tarantino film uh, about uh, like inglorious bastards you, you know i i really think it's something that makes me you know when you treat history in such a postmodern way and not any history but one of the most painful uh, events of the of the history of humanity and transform it not only into pop culture but uh, change completely even if it's in such a playful and cartoonish way, etc., and with the genius of Tarantino, I really have a. Uh, I, 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 I make a one step back from that. You know, I, I prefer Pulp Fiction, where you don't have uh, this kind of thing. And, and from this point of view, I recommend there is a, a, a great essay of the of Daniel Mendelssohn, who's a, who's a, you know a specialist in Greek and Latin language, and he wrote about Odyssey, but he's also a very, very uh, uh, keen analyzer of pop culture and of, of popular culture in, uh, in, in the last 20 years, I don't know. And he wrote an essay very violent against Tarantino's movie, saying that uh, he considers it uh, completely, completely unacceptable to transform uh, Jews into Nazis, actually. Because this is what Tarantino did. He, he, he made the, the Jews in the film uh, act like they are Nazis, killing with brutality and even, uh, you know, uh, cutting uh, signs uh, on, the, on the bodies of the Nazis, which was something like Nazis were doing, cutting swastikas on Jews' bodies. So he says, you know, I have a problem, a big problem with that. And I agree with him. And even if it's fiction, but this is fiction, you know, related to something. It's it's not uh, it's not real fiction. He didn't say uh, it's on a planet far away. Some uh, it's connected with history. It's connected with something which we know the truth uh, about. I mean the truth in the in the very common sense uh, meaning. So uh, to play with that, okay, you can play it. But uh, I, I'm not saying we should forbid the Tarantino movie. But I just say uh, one step back. No, I, I understand that point, and in, in that in Inglorious Bastards is more. You, you could see more the problem is different from once upon the time in Hollywood, uh, which is again is the same kind of, of of reworking a moment of history in which you could see from a fictional point something that had happened. It could have happened in another way, you know, to understand again what has happened. Uh, but it seems to be that uh, in the in the case of Inglorious Bastards, it could be uh, there is. The reality, the, the the memory of that reality makes the whole thing much more difficult. But again, this is another what you have brought now, uh, Radu. It's one of another problems behind it because, again, it seems to be that even though that we cannot define truth, even though that we cannot define reality, even though that we need to narrativize the narrative to narrative make us. Is our way to cope with reality, in fact, to put it in certain ways. But even though, even if we do fiction or not fiction, the, the, what we are trying to understand is still there, you know. And, uh, and, and that is the reason that I say, when you say, okay, what is an image and what is the relationship within an image with reality? And I ask, and then we, we shift to another. But if, if I bring up, and I think it's a very, key moment and a kind of turning point in the history of cinema, which is the, the Alain, Alain René uh, Night and Fog. When you see that film, 
you immediately understand that there is some connection, a strong connection between images and truth. I don't know if, if you understand me in that sense. When you see a film by the Iraqi, but you know, uh, but you know that even you Night and that? Fog, you know that Night and Fog uh, 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 obliterated the involvement of the French regime into you are mass right. killings. You are right. You know that even some images are fake. That he erased the 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 sign of French army, or I don't know, some from French from 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 an army yeah. or somebody. So uh, uh, I think this uh, what you say. So uh, uh, sure of yourself can be turned against you, and say, look, you can fall into a trap like that because even a film that almost proves a level of reality can actually be not like that. Well, let, let's. So I you understand. are agreeing. So you are agreeing with me that there is always a perspective that you don't see and that we cannot uh, solve this problem. Yes, I, I, I agree problem with you. We really cannot solve. I agree with you, but you know, even if we take this case, even if the details are, uh, or some things are, are so uh, uh, difficult to, to prove and so easy to fake, I would say that, I, I think there's these two, two, two theories about truth. One is, you know, what's correspondent between a sentence and reality, and then we, I don't know the, 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 the name of this kind of theories, and the other theories is what is coherent, you know, for instance, if I know that, uh, that uh, Portugal exists, I never been to Portugal, unfortunately, so I cannot say I can make, uh, 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 I can make a, a proof between uh, this sentence and the reality itself, because I was there and saw it, but I say, well, if 20 people around me say that Portugal exists, if I can see hundreds and thousands of images, and if I can see your films or Manuel de Oliveira films, and if I know the language and books, etc., etc., this is a coherent, all these things are coherent between themselves, that the sentence Portugal exists uh, is most probably true. But I cannot prove it, you know, like, like uh, in an absolute way. This is what I meant. So, so what I'm, what I, I was not against you, Marta, at the beginning, not at all. I was saying that because I know these kind of things um, are used, uh, which are, I mean, uh, not with a, with a good will, like in our cases here, but they are used like like it was the vaccine case. You know, all of a sudden, everybody became a philosopher and said, I mean, the the, the anti-vaxxers became very philosophers and say, how do you know what is in this vaccine? Well, I don't know, but in the same time, they would eat a chocolate. And if I would ask them, how do you know what is in those, that chocolate? They, so, you, so you see, it's always very easy to use these uh, real philosophical problems uh, in order to crush uh, the others and in order to, to make them. Uh, so this is why I, I give this example, and I'm sorry to get back to it, because it's very close to us here and it's full of refugees in the city, of Ukrainian refugees. Uh, there was uh, at some point that's, that's a very, uh, I think, a beautiful example in a way, and very naive. There was two Romanian uh, guys that saw the refugees. They even went to to the uh, border uh, to, to, to 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 look and to help. And after a few weeks of seeing these Ukrainian refugees and uh, uh, seeing in the same time so many Russian propaganda around, say, what if it's all fake? What if there's no war there? So they get into the car and went to, to and they barely escaped alive. They went to, to, the, to see if, there's, if, if really the Russians are bombing Ukrainian city. And then, well, they came back and say, oh, my God, it's, it's true. And we almost were killed, you know, but they felt this need, uh, human need to see with their own eyes. Despite the refugees around, despite all the testimonies, they would say, what if it's not true? You know, but when you speak about the past or history, you cannot go there to check it yourself by yourself or, or many other things that we, we are living around. When people say, like in the, in the pandemic or the vaccine, think with your own brain. What does it mean to think with my own brain? I can think maybe one thing every year with my own brain. Otherwise, I rely on, on the others and on the coherence of information and on the uh, all our knowledge is mediated. Everything is, is mediated. We, we cannot prove most of the things, and I don't have the time to prove everything. 
know yeah, that. but the, can I? <laughs> sure. Yes. Sorry. The thing is that, you I know, thought. I think we filmmakers and artists, we are not anything that I cannot think about it because it's a big responsibility. So for me to continue to work, I'm not here to prove anything. I'm just um, on the opposite. I, now I was thinking that of the, these two guys that um, question what if what if is a question of Stanislavski, the actor and uh, stage uh, th theater uh, theoretician, which was doing exactly the the opposite way. You know, they had. Um, a theory or a practice that where you when you were on stage doing a fiction of course if something from reality comes into the play like you know the you know something fall, falls from the you know from the ceiling or you know something that was not programmed to happen happens that the actor should integrate this into the fiction to like you know uh, put um, a veil on it, like not um, um, hiding it from the public, you know, integrate it in the, in the fiction. In this, I'm more into this side in a way to say that, okay, you know, this is all material for me to work and to think and to integrate into this narratives that I try to not to I, I don't think a film is producing an, a narrative because our work is very 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 rich in in the sense of we see one painting and this is the experience of the painting of course the real experience of the painting not a repro not a um, reproduction of the painting as we see, you know, the experience of seeing a painting in front of us. We do, what we do is to, it's very rich because it's a sense, the sense of reality is passing through time and space. And this is not one image. You know, what I'm trying to say that art cannot produce rhetoric. And this is the the ultimate um, r richness of art. We are not producing one point of view. And when uh, a piece of art is like pointing to one uh, way or this is already something wrong there. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to, to do, what I think is just to put in into uh, connection you know and through this connections through these relations we you know something happens there some click some some in I, I just to uh, I was just uh, uh, thinking about the uh, and one of the most wonderful experience I had in the theater room was Wang Bing was winning Doc Lisboa I think in 2014 with a film called father and sons and it was the a wonderful experience because i didn't see any of the films i was not here in lisbon so when i uh, arrived i went to see the you know wang bing because it, it was playing again and many of the people i think they were there because they thought okay we didn't go to doc lisboa but we are going to see the winners of the festival because this is already like you know the best of it and it was an amazing experience because I think like 10 people left the room, but noisily, you know, very, very, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they were even talking to the screening and shouting and saying, oh, this is, uh, this is the film that was, <laughs> that was winning this festival. What is this? Because they couldn't handle that this film i don't know but it has like three five shot three four shots you know and i was with my little sister and she was amazed by the film and she said you know we would never experience this time 
and the, the place of these children if we were not there for so long. And this is, I think now, one of the films that I think it's most uh, um, connected with this notion of, uh, because it's very, very long shot. The film is like one hour and a half. And there are two main, very, very long shots where we just see, you know, the kids playing with a mobile, eating uh, something, listening to the radio. And actually their house is like one, one bed. And the father, it's, it's a ghost. It's like a shadow, you know? And the film's called Father and Sons. And the, the father is going out to work and the sons come from the school and just stay waiting uh, for, the far, for the father to, to, to come back. So, and, and it's, of course, in a way it's a fiction. <laughs> and, and it's a beautiful way how one being connected this few shots that he was able to do. I wanted to comment something when you involved uh, Stanislavski. As a, as a young documentary filmmaker, I trained myself as a method actor. Not that I wanted to, to be an actor, which I'm not. In fact, my, my professor, who was uh, very funny, he would often tell me to before I would go out and do an improvisation to not suffer so much, to relax, since I was not going to be an actor to enjoy myself. And he would often say something on what you said about Stanislavski, which I thought was very interesting, that the actor should be uh, so involved, the stage actor should be so involved in his performance, uh, and so um, disregard, so disaffected by anything uh, around, you know, like the fourth wall, like completely sort of uh, isolated from the, the reality of the, of the theater. But if there was a fire, he should, uh, you know, get, get the fuck out of there. So he should be completely like in this uh, full into, you know, uh, fiction. But there has to be one little, you know, window there for survival, you know, and to, because there's also with theater, unlike ourselves, there's always like next performance, right? That, you know, you cannot break your bones or, you know, uh, or burn, burn yourself. Uh, but you, you know, to... uh, Gaston, uh, probably you know it, but maybe, uh, I don't know, our viewers don't know it. There is this joke with uh, that aristocrat woman from France that she say, I pay one million dollars to be fucked by, uh, by uh, Peter the Great. And just by accident, a Russian theater group is there. And so they bring uh, an actor dressed as Peter the Great and he's uh, fucking the lady and she's uh, really amazed. And then the next day she said, well, I give one million if, I don't know, Napoleon would uh, fuck me. And the, they bring again the actor dressed as Napoleon and he, he's <laughs> making love with her and she's uh, in the ninth heaven, etc. And the third day she... Uh, calls the actor and say, and I, I, I pay you now, to, I want to make love with you, with the actor, you know? And the actor said, this is not possible. And she said, how, how do you mean it's not possible? And he said, you know, I'm biologically impotent. Uh, I cannot <laughs> make love to you. And she said, but you did it very well uh, the last two nights. And he said, yes, but I played using uh, Stanislavski's method. <laughs> <laughs> this, this reminds me of of two very interesting uh, anecdotes. Slowly, this whole uh, poison of, uh, of uh, Roger's questions with the fake uh, unities is starting to kick in. Uh, I'm thinking of my film Papyrosen, my grandmother, who's a, a protagonist uh, of the 20th century, sad one. She had the uh, intelligence to die uh, right before the continuity of this uh, global geopolitical uh, uh, scandals we're living now. But there's a story by Miller's Forman, which I like very much, very much. Um, when they were shooting Amadeus in the Prague opera where Don Giovanni was originally premiered in the Soviet times, it's like a whole wood, it's a lot of wood, and there's before they put it into electricity, so it's all candle lit, and they're shooting the scene of Don Giovanni. And there is the whole firemen of the Czech, of you know, of Czechoslovakia are, you know, parking right outside of this, uh, you know, whatever 17th century wood lit, all wood candle lit opera. And during a take, uh, 
uh, how do you say a feather a feather in the hat of the of the of the uh, tenor catches fire and all of the firemen all of the firemen of the soviet Czechoslovakia are standing there like you know waiting to really you know attack this guy but but the camera is still rolling you know this uh, not the digital but you know the whispering of the 35 millimeter and nobody moves until uh, they until they they cut i mean they, they there's this respect also for the sense of fiction the sense of of, of time um and of course when, when they cut like i think the guy was not, <laughs> not out because at least 50 people uh, you know jumped over him and and this also reminds me of my grandmother when i was trying to get out of her these uh, fragments of history which i i thought i needed in order to finish my film and that i thought I, they belonged to me or to us uh, so I, I felt the authorization to to torture her and and really inquire on things that she has never really talked about that she needn't never wanted to talk about or, or and i and of course what i found and that's why i i find it documentary if i had to choose in that regard or reality much more interesting and that's why I refuse uh, or, or have no money to work with scripts because it's always much more interesting what I stumble upon and what I find rather than what I'm supposed to be looking for. Of course, I need to be looking for something to set with a group of people at a certain time to, to make a film. But it's always the capacity to be open to, to see other things, to connect, as Marta said before, these materials as they happen, this epiphany that I call it's always much more uh, rich and, of course, cinematic, whatever that means. Uh, so, of course, my grandmother's refusal to, to answer what I wanted was the very, you know, matter of the film I was making. I was not so aware of this. And even though I was film, I was doing this digital recording, uh, she did not just uh, escape very clever my, my questions, even though she reenacted like a slow operatic... Uh, the pictures of death to some sort of send me away, but I could see her, you know, in her bed, like spying if I was still there. But she asked me to cut, not just to beat it out, to beat it or to stop it. She wanted me to stop, you know, recording the idea that there's something still like, like the fireman, like there's something sort of cir in circles, like, you know, a tape. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about this when we were talking about this. By the way, you know what Godard said about uh, Amadeus uh, by uh, Forman? No. He said that uh, Forman did to Mozart what Soviet Union did to Czechoslovakia. <laughs> Godard, Godard can be mistaken too. <laughs> sure, but, <laughs> but uh, not in this case. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, but there's the element of sub subjectivity, you know, I mean, uh, I have not never seen the film that Francis Ford Coppola made in, uh, in Argentina, but apparently it's like a sum of the cliches of Buenos Aires, but very, you know, fine tasted the friends and colleagues from around the world adore this film, it's called Tetro, and people in Argentina think it's the complete stupidest, you know, depiction of Buenos Aires. So I think often, again, the idea of truth, you know, or, you know, it's so, it's also, uh, I mean, there is an element of subjectivity to it. I mean, we pointed very very polemic. I mean, we're still in the midst of, I mean, us who thought coming from different places, all very connected in some ways, that, you know, history was these big events, you know, recently before us, you know, here, important events, you know, in the 70s, in Europe, in the war. Uh, and, you know, how do these huge events that impact us today, Marta was just talking about the um, metaverse, you were talking about the war hitting very near your border, uh, and so many other of these restructuring of important things in the world, you know, how do we perceive them uh, when they, you know, while they're happening? So I also find that a lot of this is very, is very uh, complex and, and subjective. <clears throat> Maybe it's the time to, to finish and to, to put an end. Um, I wonder if you want to add something else and and if not, we could say goodbye, but maybe there is something else to be said, and this is the moment, if you want. Maybe, maybe you know that Wittgenstein um, gave this quote by Nestroy at the beginning of philosophical investigations, and because you mentioned progress before, you mentioned, you said there's some progress, 
and Wittgenstein puts this quote that says something like uh, uh, there is uh, the characteristic of progress to always seem bigger than it actually is. So, so maybe I don't know, maybe there is. A... Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Finally, you were more philosophical than Marta and I. You, you have to admit that. No, you I know. The biggest uh, and royalty. No, 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 uh, no, no. Just, uh, it, it, just it, reading it, on Wikipedia here. No, no, no. I don't. I know your house. I know how many books you have. So, no, and, and, and Gaston also, and I can imagine Marta. But, um, but I think maybe there was no progress, but there were, was circling around a problem and sometimes that's the only way to make progress because when we stop thinking well that's a big problem you know when you stop thinking you don't uh, i think we have to think about cinema nowadays as never before that's my my main concern in this uh, round table and I have to admit that I am extremely, at least for me, this 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 round table has been extremely satisfied. Uh, I tr truly, truly thank all of you for being here. Marta, of course, Radu, of course, and my fellow Argentinian filmmaker, Gaston Solniki. Uh, thank to all, Radu, Marta, and, and Gaston, and thank to all the audience over there. I want to say thank you also to Jago, who is behind the camera, is one of those that we don't see, but is the one who produced technically the possibility to meet and to be with the audience. So those people, as the technicians behind any cinema, when they are the projectionist, they are so extremely important as the people who are in front of you. We are not important, but in the sense that this is an event and we are part of the event, but the people behind is also part of the event. So thank you so much for the people who has been with us. Thank you again, Gaston, Radu and Marta. Thank you, Jago. Thank you, Play Doc. And I hope cinema goes on and, and life, of course, also. Bye-bye. And thanks. Thank you, Roger.